Welcome to Real Asia. I've been watching Star Twinkle Precure because I'm an adult, and if I want to watch a children's show, I can. My experience with the Pretty Cure franchise has only really extended to a few of the video games, as well as Netflix's Saban esque adaptation of Pretty Cure Smile and Pretty Cure Doki Doki under the name Glitter Force. Star Twinkle Precure marks not only my first time watching a Pretty Cure show in its original Japanese and subtitled, but also my first time watching it as it airs weekly. My friends and associates impressed upon me how strong of a start Star Twinkle Precure had, so I reluctantly watched the first episode, to test the waters as it were. I was expecting to at least enjoy Star Twinkle Precure, having previously thought fondly of Glitter Force adaptations, despite it being a Netflix bastardization of the original Japanese. As it turns out, now seven episodes in, I am thoroughly enjoying the new Pretty Cure. I am officially hooked. It really is so much better to watch this kind of show in its original, unedited Japanese form. There are common threads across every Pretty Cure show. Young girls who become magical girls called Pretty Cures, who work to defeat evil forces in order to save the world, universe, fairy tale kingdom, or whatever it is that season. This time around, the Starry Sky World, home to the 12 Chinese Zodiac themed star princesses who maintain the peace and order in the universe, is attacked by evil beings called Not Raiders. The Star Princesses scatter themselves across the universe, disguised in the form of pens, and it's up to the Pretty Cures to find and recover each princess. Our lead character is Hikaru Hoshina. She acts as the glue that keeps the team together. While not talented at much besides drawing and coming up with ideas, her presence empowers the rest of the team, and her passion for all things outer space is fun to watch. One night, staring out from her bedroom window, she sees a shooting star, and imagines a cute constellation, which she draws in her magical twinkle book. The constellation comes to life in the form of a fluffy little flying creature, which whisks Hikaru away on what can only be described as a really bad drug trip. In the morning, Hikaru is ready to write the evening's events off as an overactive imagination coming up with a ridiculous dream only to hear the giggles of the fluffy little alien as it bolts out of the bedroom window. Later on, Hikaru manages to catch up with the little alien, and we're introduced to its carers. <laughs> An octopus-like alien named Prince, and a humanoid girl alien named Lala Hagoromo. We're also told that the little fluffy alien's name is Spegasus Pulalan Mothpick Princewink, but let's just go with Fuar for short, because everyone else does. Before they can have a knees up and a chin wag, the first villain is introduced, Capard. He's a space capper. I never thought I'd see a space capper, never mind one so damn cool and suave, but the universe shines favourably on us. After a little bit of conflict, Hikaru risks her life to save Fuwa, and discovers the magical power to become a pretty cure. She manages to push Kapard off, but Lala's space rocket is damaged in the fight and is forced to crash down to Earth. Lala is jealous of Hikaru at first because she wanted to be a pretty cure, though she eventually discovers that she too is a pretty cure. Soon after, two more girls join the ranks, Elena Amamiya, a girl with a Gyaru style appearance who acts as the strong, powerful, athletic link in the team, 
and Madoka Kaguya, an introverted, multi-talented young girl who could be both ladylike and, well, the opposite, depending on should the situation call for it. It's the same traits we've seen in countless Pretty Cure shows already. But in this particular Pretty Cure show, we have villains based on the Japanese yokai. They are the aforementioned Not Raiders, and their plan is to plunge the universe into darkness by taking the princess pens and giving their power to their leader, who has yet to be shown. I've already mentioned Capard, but the other bad guys include the voluptuous Tenjo, based on a Tengu, obviously, and Iwan based on the cycloptic child yokai known as the Hitotsume Kozu. Did I just coin the word cycloptic? Yes, viewers. Yes, I did. As of creating this little review, we're seven episodes in, and the main cast has finally started their journey through space to uncover one of the princess pens. Judging by the end of the episode preview, the characters may get to explore a whole heaping of weird themed planets while searching for the scattered pens. Alongside this season, a film titled Precure Miracle Universe will air in Japanese theatres. It's a crossover movie with characters from Hugto Precure and Kira Kira Precure a la mode, and will follow a story not entirely connected to the season. I look forward to watching more episodes of this show as they air every week, and would love for this season to receive some kind of Western release, though I shudder at the idea of a Glitter Force adaptation they'd probably superimpose some armor on Tenjo's massive knockers because we can't be having boobies in a children's show. Oh! Oh! Kentucky Fried Titties! Star Twinkle Pretty Cure is Star Twinkle Pretty Cool and gets a rating of recommended. We're seven episodes in and it's just another enjoyable magical girl anime with a good sense of humor, decent animation, and fun character designs. This has been Real Asia I've been watching on the subject of Star Twinkle Pretty Cure. Remember to rate this episode and comment if this is something you'd like to see more of. And until next time, sayonara.